Wilson Morales from Black Women TV. Hello, Mr. Foreman. It's a pleasure to meet you. My pleasure, Wilson. So how long in the making has this been going on? Obviously, I'm sure they've been wanting to tell your stories on the big screen for years, but now we're here. How long was the process? It's been a journey. We started talking about this movie almost four years ago. But now, it, it, uh, but and it's taken a long time to put it together. And I'm happy now because it took a long time, but it turned out things were right at the right time now. You know, the thing about biopics is you get a beginning, you get an end. Thankfully, it's not a cradle to the grave, you know. So what aspect of your life did you want more people to know about that we can't find on Wikipedia? Oh, boy. You know, the George Foreman story is a wonderful American story. And it can be told as an American story. Someone so far down, and it doesn't matter how many times you're knocked down, even stumped on <laughs> and swept out the door, you can still get up and try it again. This movie tells that story. Mm -hmm. When you're working with, obviously, it's your blessing, you know, with the directors and the writers, um, did you have a hand in casting Chris? And if so, you know, you were like, he's got to gain more weight. Nice. <laughs> Chris Davis, yes. what I was happy about is that he was a pure actor. It wasn't about a celebrity stepping in during the movie. It was about a real stage actor. He brought George Foreman alive in the movie, someone that I could sit there and enjoy. People ask me now, well, who is George Foreman? I said, Chris Davis. <laughs> Chris Davis, what an actor. What a job he did. I remember being young enough to watch that Michael Moore fight and then hearing, and then I actually, after I saw the film, I went back to the video on YouTube to see the announcers talk about it and they all said it's a shock. And obviously, every time you defy the odds, there's always going to be a shock, whether it be in basketball or any sort of sport, you know. But for you, you know, you have this incredible tale, you know, of being one of the, still one of the greats. And now we get to see it on the big screen. For those who are now going to know who you are, because nowadays, you know, there's too much program. You don't know what you're going to watch unless you are a boxing fan fan. What do you want people to get out from watching your story? Uh, I really want people to watch the movie because it reveals not only George Foreman, but it reveals something about all of us. We've been in a position where it looked like it's all over, yet we're given a second, even a third chance. No one is so far down that we can't just get rise to the top again. That's the story of George Foreman. Was there ever a point after you retired the second time you wanted to get back in the ring? Or when you knew it was over, it was over? Yeah, when it was over, it was over. I left boxing for 10 years. I didn't even make a fist at all. My whole life was dedicated to my ministry at the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't think I'd ever box again. But there came a time when I needed boxing. I needed to make a living, my only profession. I did it. Thank God I did it. But after I left boxing the last time, uh, I knew that, would, that wouldn't be anymore. I told my wife once I was going back, and she said, oh, no, you are not. I said, you don't, think, you don't believe in me? You don't think I can do it? She said, isn't that the time to leave it when you feel like you can do it, George? And uh, I said, you know, you're right. And I left boxing when I felt like I could still do it. And you left boxing with a mark that it will never be, uh, I guess, replicated again. Congratulations on having your story told. I hope more people talk about it. And uh, keep it up. We'll talk down the road. Take thank, care. Thank you so much. Wilson Morales from Black Women TV. Hey, Chris, how's it going? I'm good. Wilson, how are you? Good. And I've seen your work on stage in the past, you know, past years, and now you're on a big screen. Not that it's the first time on a big screen, but here you're in a yeah. new role. Talking about playing a role of George Foreman, and how much did you, you know, how challenging was it preparing for this role? Uh, well, as you know, you know, I've been on stage for many years, and, you know, uh, so initially I, I approached it as I would a, uh, a play, right? understanding what the arc is, what the story is, how to break the script down, how to break the story down, get into my character and the relationship. So I already had that. Uh, but what I didn't have was the fight training, you know, that he had, you know. Uh, so that for me was one of the bigger challenges. I mean, even when I was doing all of my research on him, you know, watching videos, um, reading his autobiographies, there was still an element that was missing, right? That, that deeply human element. 
Um, and because he was so, he's so well known, you know, you can't, you, it's easy to mess up. So I went down to Houston and visited him for a few days just, just to watch, just to see what those real subtle nuances were. And hopefully I could pick them up and add them to the well of information I already had that could give me some type of fuel to tell him the story. He's promoting it. Obviously, he's on board with it. You know, what did you get out of talking with him and doing this film that you think audiences haven't known for years? Um, well, what I'll say to that is, I, I don't think audiences ever really knew who Mr. Foreman was. I don't think that people who knew him as the boxer in the 70s had a clue who he was. I don't think that people who know him from his entrepreneurship knew who he was. I don't think that anyone really knew who Mr. Foreman was. And quite frankly, this film is barely scratching the surface on just how deep Mr. Foreman is. Uh, so I think that everyone is going to learn quite a bit about Mr. Foreman. I mean, I know I did. I was in complete awe of Mr. Foreman's story and his journey when I read all of his autobiographies and saw the films and things like that. I think people are going to be surprised to see how just big, how, how big his heart always was throughout his entire life. You know, and that uh, sometimes our given circumstances um, are part of the reason that make us hard and jaded. You know, there's always that trade next man up. And, you know, you've been a part of a number of, of ensembles, film, stage, TV. When you do a role like this where you're the first one on the call sheet and it's your time is up now, what are you getting from George's direction that helps you as an actor skill set wise? Well, I think the thing about George and I is that it felt very collaborative. Um, I brought a lot to the table, I believe, because I did, I worked very hard on my own uh, when it came to uh, doing a, a proper interpretation of Mr. Foreman. Um, and George Tillman had the vision. And, you know, I, for me, I was like, hey, you know, George is carrying, George Tillman Jr. is carrying so much, right? that I can't also ask him to tell me how to act. That's my job. I have to do that. I have to come with that, right? This is such a big story. And like I said before, my theater background gave me the tools to be able to tell a complete story. This is what we do in theater. So that's the way that I treated it. So for me, I wanted George Tillman to know and to trust me that I was, I, I was able to uphold my end of the bargain and that these are, other, these are things he doesn't have to worry about. And lots of times he and I were able to be complete collaborators on what the essence of this moment was and what his vision is here and how I can elevate that. It was always about how can I elevate what his vision is without him having to go do the work for me, you know? Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and that's the way that we worked together. Congratulations on the role. Congratulations on the film. I'm sure I'll see more of you because this is going to be the one that will have people talking about you because now we'll see you in a different light. So keep it up. I'll talk to you down your road in your next project. Thank you. Take care. Good talking to you. Wilson Morales from Black Men TV. Hey, Mr. Whitaker, how's it going? Hey, good to see you. Good. You know, between executive producing a bunch of projects, you know, the, the epic series and now films, what went into saying yes to taking on this role? I like the message, and I like, you know, I like the fact that it talks about coming out of all kinds of difficulties to still achieve your dreams. And um, I thought it was an interesting character to do that with. How much of a deep dive did you do on Doc outside of what the script called for? Well, yeah, I had the script to look at, but I also had documentaries that were made about him that really were a guidance for me. And then I got a shout out, like a couple of little clues from George Foreman. So it was really great. Do you remember watching the fights at that point and watching his comeback? I, I was at the fight for the comeback. I was there. Oh, really? Yeah, that was that night. I remember really well. I remember walking in and thinking, wow, look at this, you know, all the people and their, some of them in fur jackets and some of them, like, they were from all different walks of life and, like, sitting when the. Now, go ahead. Are we talking the first fight or, or the Michael Moore fight? The Michael Moore fight. Okay. The other one, uh, the other ones I know from when I was a kid, you know, like with Ali and uh, with uh, Frazier and him, and those are big points in like growing up as a child. 
you know, so in your conversation with Foreman, obviously he's giving you insight as far as the character you're playing. Was there anything you you learned about him that you didn't know before? Uh, did he get car sick? But, and I think probably most importantly was his description of, uh, of um, Doc being like someone who was fearless. Mm -hmm. You know, you work with George Tillman, who's directed a bunch of films, done mm -hmm. a bunch of ensembles. You know, no matter how long you've been in this business, actors can never stop learning. Is there anything you picked up from his direction? You know, I haven't, you know, you've been the director, you've been a producer, you've been an EP, but did you get anything out of Tillman's direction that was new to you? I mean, it was interesting watching, like, you know, I've been in a fight film before, but watching, like, the different generations of fights going on that, they had, that he had to betray and how he was, de how detailed he was in that, how detailed he was in, like, the specifics of which shots he would need for which, which era, the color changes, and it was, it was actually quite complicated what he was trying to, trying to accomplish. Just, not just the acting, which is always complicated, but the uh, actual changing of different arenas, because we basically were in the same arena for all the different fights. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, Chris Davis, this was a big role for him. I know I've seen him on stage, but I guess a lot of people don't know him on the screen yet. You know, was anything you talked to him about in regards to being number one on a call sheet and, and play this role? Obviously, he had a bulk up for the role, you know, that he can take away from doing this movie. I mean... He was like totally there when I first met him, like in character and that the energy of the person. I mean, he was willing to commit. He, he was like a really committed actor and really talented. And uh, I remember like coming back when he came back from uh, the hiatus for him to gain weight, and thinking, is that real? I don't think that stomach's real. <laughs> I just saw him like weeks ago and it doesn't look like it, but he did it. He's committed to doing a great performance and I think he did. Hey, you've been there before. You put on the wakeful roles, you know, so like, hey, it's, it's nice to see somebody else do it and stay committed to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's a pleasure speaking to you once again. Like I said, you know, you always got projects. So I'm sure I'll talk to you sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a couple movies coming out this year. All right, we'll make it so. Have right. yourself a great day, Mr. Parker. Bye.